welcome to a new program titled Ask Ben, the Wisdom and Witticisms of Benjamin Franklin. We will um, attempt to answer your questions in the spirit of one of our most revered and beloved founding fathers, one Benjamin Franklin. Uh, for instance, I have a letter here from a Mr. Oliver Studwell of Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. And Mr. Studwell writes, Dear Ben, why were you never elected president of the United States? Well, Mr. Studwell, good question. In fact, I was very old and infirm at the time of our uh, nation's founding. Uh, what with the gal and the kidney stones and so forth. After all, I was 70 years old when I embarked on a perilous mission over the seas to, uh, as ambassador of our fledgling nation to, uh, to Paris, France. Um, my contemporaries were all much younger than me. I'm speaking of Washington and Adams and Jefferson. And um, yes, I was um, uh, in my 80th year when I came back from France uh, to help draft the Constitution of the United States. So uh, no, Mr. Studwell, I would uh, not be a, a good candidate uh, in that season of life for uh, president of our new nation. Only one man uh, was able to fill those shoes, and that was our um, illustrious uh, General George Washington. Now, that's not to say that an older person should not be president or could not be president. Uh, but remember, um, as it's written, uh, all would live long, but none would be old. What does that mean? Um, we'll have to ask Richard Saunders, the fictitious author of Poor Richard's Almanac, on that one. In fact, I'll make a note of it. Uh, I'll write that down uh, when we're done here. Uh, but And I'll get back to you, uh, Mr. Studwell. Um, here is another question. Uh, I have a letter here from a Mr. Alan Faber of Peoria, Illinois. And Mr. Faber writes, Dear Ben, People call you Dr. Franklin. Are you also a medical doctor in addition to your many accomplishments? Well, thank you for your question, Mr. Faber, but no, I am not a medical doctor. Uh, although I did design a flexible catheter for my uh, aged and ailing brother, John, um, but that doesn't qualify me for a uh, for doctor. No, my degree, my honorary doctorate, uh, is from uh, the University of of St. Andrews in Edinburgh, Scotland. How's my Scottish birth? Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh, <clears throat> the University of St. Andrews bestowed upon me that uh, honor, honorary uh, title, honorary doctorate for my work and experiments with electricity. Uh, not to mention my other honorary doctorates from uh, the College of William and Mary, uh, Yale and Harvard. Uh, well, I mentioned them anyway, but uh, uh, regardless, I'm, I'm quite proud of those um, honors um, bestowed upon me. After all, I only received two years of formal education in my native Boston. In fact, my father, my father wanted me to be a minister, uh, but when he found out how much that would, an education, uh, such an education would cost, he pulled me out of school and sent me to work in his candle making and tallow shop, uh, which I rebelled against, and I planned to run away to sea. Uh, I was going to be a cabin boy and a merchantman, and uh, one of the ships docked, the many ships docked in uh, Boston Harbor. My father found out about my plans and instead apprenticed me to work for my older brother James, uh, my half brother James, who um, had a print shop and published the New England current. Well, I began to work there, learning how to set type and so forth, but I soon tired of this, uh, these duties, setting type and then sweeping up the shop after hours. And I began to uh, uh, think about my future. Um, but I should, I should say that I'm very um, uh, proud. Well, you know, about what they say about pride. Uh, I, uh, wasn't satisfied, which with my situation there in the print shop working for my brother, apprentice to my brother, 
Which leads me to our next letter, which comes from a Mrs. Rose Humidor of Scranton, Pennsylvania. And Mrs. Humidor writes, Dear Ben, is it true that you once impersonated a widow named Silence Duguid? Well, Mrs. Humidor, that's true. As a precocious 15-year-old apprentice in my brother's shop, uh, I, I began to um, write letters secretly, sliding them under the print shop door at night, and my brother, unbeknownst, uh, not knowing who was the author of these uh, letters, um, be published them in his newspaper, and they became quite popular. Silence Do Good had quite a readership there in Boston, because uh, he actually absolutely refused to publish uh, letters and things that I had written under my own name, so I adopted the persona of Silence Do Good, who was a widow, uh, an independent-minded woman whose uh, husband had passed, and she was actually running his business much better than he ever did. Now, when my brother found out, when James found out he had been duped, he was uh, extremely upset. In fact, he was furious. We even tussled on the floor of the print shop. Now, that's not the reason why I stopped writing as Silence Do Good. Um, if the truth be told, I actually, or Silence Do Good actually began to receive serious proposals of marriage from the lovelorn gentleman of Boston. It was time to stop writing as Silence Do Good at that point. Um, but because of my brother's uh, malevolent uh, mistreatment of me and, uh, and my <clears throat> wanderlust, I... I left, I ran, I broke my apprenticeship. I admit, I ran, uh, ran away, first to New York, uh, and then to my uh, home, eventual home, and became the so-called sage of Philadelphia, eventually. Um, so, uh, working there, of course, I established myself with my own, uh, eventually, with my own um, uh, print shop, but uh, this is... Uh, uh, information uh, that I'll share with you at a later date. But I wanted to um, emphasize that uh, you can uh, send your questions to Ben and uh, he will attempt to answer them uh, on Ask Ben. Uh, just send them to bcarlton at gcls.org. Um, much quicker than, uh, you know, pen and paper and the postal system of which I was in charge is, uh, well, that's a whole nother story. It's gotten much worse than when I ran the show, but um, again, it's, uh, information for another time. But uh, again, if you'd like to ask the Ben a question, uh, he will attempt to answer your questions. And um, uh, so I, I just wanted to leave you with these words of wisdom that remember the doors of wisdom are never closed. You remember that. So, <clears throat> thank you for listening, and uh, I'll be back in, uh, in a short while to answer some of your questions. Just remember to email them to bcarlton at gsls.org to ask Ben. Thanks for watching. So long.